Hey, poker people, it's Sky Matsuhashi, and this is the Smart Poker Study Podcast. I hope you caught last week's episode number 165, my discussion of how I prep on the felt for A game success will be very helpful for you. Alrighty, it's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I am extremely grateful that my show actually has loyal listeners. You know, when I started doing the podcast, I had no idea it would grow to be what it is. It's become so important to me, and I know it's an important part of your weekly studies as well. Thank you for listening. Uh, Thanks for subscribing, for leaving reviews, and for telling your friends. You know, I get emails all the time from people who, who they just discovered the show, and it's super humbling when they tell me they've gone back and they've listened from the beginning. They're binge listening. That's just, it's it's kind of unbelievable. And uh, thank you so very much. And also, I am extremely grateful to all of my Patreon supporters. Week after week, new poker peeps are supporting me there. Thank you so much to my newest patron, Nick Pakula. Thank you very much, Nick. I do appreciate it. I put this show on for you and for everybody else listening. And uh, it's actually quite fun, but it is time consuming. My time in putting the show together is supported by everyone on Patreon. So thank you very much. Your Patreon support shows me that you enjoy the show and that you want it to keep on keeping on. If you'd like to find out how you can support as well, go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T- R-E-O-N.com slash smart poker study. You can go there to find out the different levels of support and the different rewards that are attached to each of those levels. Uh, December's coming up soon, so I'll be putting together some new podcast and some training video content only for patrons in the coming weeks. Once you begin your support on Patreon, you'll get the current month's reward as well as access to the archive of patron-only content. So just for a few dollars a month, often less than one tournament buy-in, you'll support the show and receive some valuable poker content in return. So visit patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to start your support. Alrighty, it is time to talk about off-the-felt poker mindset, particularly when it comes to your study sessions. So today is class 3 of the 10th and final MED, or minimum effective dose for those of you tuning in for the first time. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 166. Alrighty, let's get to it. Gambate! This is damn exciting stuff. In the first class of this Mindset Minimum Effective Dose series, I talked about the things I do pre-session to get ready for A-game level play, and I followed that up with class number two about the mindset that I strive for in session. If you missed those episodes, go back and check them out, as I think they hold some potentially valuable insights for you. Today I'm going to discuss my off-the-felt poker study mindset. The first thing I want to address are some challenges I faced when I first began studying poker and the solutions that I took to overcome these challenges. So for the longest time, my studies didn't benefit me like I thought they should. Are you in the same boat right now? For me, I believe there were three challenges I faced when trying to improve my game through studying. The first challenge, I was averse to studying in general. You know, from years of being forced to study in school, studying felt like a chore. And of course, when it comes to chores, everybody hates doing chores. Weeding the flower beds, cleaning the toilet, dusting the house, all of that crap is no fun. Conversely, fun things get done. Watching a movie, reading a book, playing with my boys, uh, building Lego sets. The fun stuff I love to do, I could do it all day long, of course. So. My challenge was turning study from a chore into a fun activity. My solution to this issue came first when I realized that we have two things that we absolutely have control over in life, our actions and our attitude. Sometimes we need to force ourselves into action. And here's how you do it. Just study for five minutes. You'll find that this revs up your study engine and then you take off like a shot, often studying 30 minutes or even up to a full hour or longer. That other thing we control I mentioned is our attitude. We have to adopt a study-loving mindset. All those years of school conditioned me to hate study, and I would use negative inner dialogue like, I hate studying and studying is boring. I eventually learned to use positive self-talk to convince myself to study. Things like, you know, I would say things like, uh, uh, studying helps me make money, and studying adds skills to my repertoire. Those kinds of phrases help to change my attitude towards study. 
When you combine these two ideas, action and a positive attitude, you will start studying more. With more study comes better play and more profits. This will solidify the value of study in your mind and you'll study more, make more money, enjoy poker more. This will just create a positive feedback loop where you're just constantly studying, getting better, making more money, studying, getting better, making more money over and over again. The second challenge that I faced was I didn't know what to study. So from the get-go, uh, I was completely overwhelmed with so much poker content. Free videos on YouTube, articles, blogs, mailing lists, books, uh, podcasts, training sites like Tournament Poker Edge. Man, with so much available to me, I didn't know where to go. My challenge was staying focused on one thing at a time and avoiding overwhelm. So the solution for this, I have a three-part solution for this for you. Uh, the first part, part A, Follow my list of MEDs, starting with episode number 87, for an overview of the whole minimum effective dose idea. Then move on to episode 90 for pre-flop ranges. Uh, part B of the solution is study uncomfortable spots. In the last episode, I discussed tagging hands with an uncomfortable tag in Poker Tracker 4. Just create your own tag called uncomfortable. If you're uncomfortable with the spot, this is a great area to study. Do you hate double barreling out of position? then study it. Do you hate facing donk bets? Then study it. And the third part, part C, get yourself a coach. You can have them go through your database and they can direct you to what you should study next. Coaches can often spot hidden issues that will lead to big improvements in your game. And the third challenge I faced was I basically didn't know how to study properly. When I started studying and working on my game, I didn't do much more than read books and watch videos. I didn't know about studying individual hands or studying an entire session. I didn't know about looking at ranges or running simulations. I didn't even know what a HUD was at first, uh, nor HUD stats, of course. And I never even discussed hands with friends or with other people in poker forums. My challenge was finding productive modes of study and taking the lessons I was learning and applying them to my game. So here's some solutions for you if you're faced with this same challenge. You know, <laughs> it benefits me, of course, but I want you to get How to Study Poker Volumes 1 and 2. Volume 1 shows you how to plan your studies, and it gives you 25 study techniques to get the most out of your time off the felt. And Volume 2 shows you how I used everything that I taught in Volume 1, and I used it all through 28 days of actual study. I documented everything I learned, and I showed you how I put it to use in my play sessions, as well as how I tracked my stats and created strategy cheat sheets from my own studies. Another thing you could do is study hands using Flopzilla or another equity calculator so that you can start to see how equities change street by street as new cards hit the board. You can also pit range versus range or range versus hand to see how they fare against each other. Another great study technique is posting questionable hands in forums and asking for input from others. What you want to do is analyze their suggestions and question their ideas. Treat it like you're a scientist trying to figure out answers for yourself. Sure, you will take the input of others, but you'll run the math for yourself and test out strategies before you fully incorporate anything that people say into your own game. So those are three great ideas, but the key thing here is to really just study and try out different methods of study. You'll only learn how to study by getting out there and doing the work yourself. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, something I learned from a guy named Jim Quick. He's the founder of quicklearning.com and he is a brain and memory trainer and he has his own podcast called Quick Brain. I highly recommend that you listen to this podcast. Jim Quick taught me a great technique for learning anything faster and he calls it the FAST method. F-A-S-T. FAST. So this is an acronym and let me break it down for you right now. F stands for forget. So we need to forget everything that we already know about the subject at hand. He explains that full cups can't hold any more water. We need to empty our cup and delete any working knowledge of the study topic at hand. Whatever we think we know about C bets, three bets, opening ranges, bluffs, uh, donk raises, bet sizing, whatever we think we know, that needs to be pushed aside to make way for new information. We also need to forget our limitations. No more negative self-talk or the persistent idea that you just can't do this or do that. I received so many emails from people asking for help in understanding outs and odds. They say things in their emails like, I am terrible at math, or I can never understand this, or I just can't get it. Those phrases are all limiting beliefs. We need to drop our negative speak 
and get positive in our minds. It goes back to my prior point of controlling our attitudes. A can-do, growth-minded attitude is much more beneficial for learning. I want you to say things like, I will learn outs and odds, or I will learn to use math to my advantage. So that was the F in fast, forget. The A stands for active. Our brains learn better through creating rather than just sitting there consuming. You're listening to me right now, and I'm sure some of it's sinking in. But if you don't put into action the things I'm telling you, then you might only be getting 10 to 15% out of this episode. You've all heard the saying, what you put in is what you get out. So whatever piece of content you're studying, you've got to consume it, take notes, create action steps, then finally do, do, do. So let's take this episode for example. There's four parts to this right here. Part one is to listen. So first you're going to consume the content. You know, you're learning about off the felt mindset techniques that I use for my own studies. And then you also wanna think about how you could do more or less or how you currently do more or less than I do. Part two is you wanna take notes. Now, this is the active part of you consuming this content. You know, physical notes are the best for memory and you should have written down the F and the A in FAST already, as well as taken notes about the study challenges and solutions I presented earlier. Part three that you want to do when you're taking notes is you want to actually create notes. So think about how you can put into action what you're learning. Here are some questions to help you think about the content you're consuming and creating your own notes. How do I change my off the felt study mindset? What does the content make me think of? Where am I facing similar issues? Can this be used outside of poker in my life? And then part four of consuming this content, this episode today, is to act. What you want to do is act on the things that will benefit you. So I talked about, you know, taking notes in a notebook. Let's say you don't have a notebook. Let me show you something using Alexa. Alexa, order me a notebook. Did you want me to find notebook? Yes, please. Amazon's choice for notebook is Mead Spiral One Subject Notebook, 70 college ruled sheets, assorted colors, six pack. It's $11.91 total, including tax. Would you like to buy it? No, thank you. All right. I can now send more search results. Alexa, stop. Hope. Wow, getting active like that is super easy with an Alexa around to do your ordering for you. As soon as those notebooks arrive, uh, you know, start taking notes. Absolutely. Another thing you can do to start to get active on, uh, on this podcast is just flip the script and start with that positive self-talk. Alrighty, next up, the S in FAST, it stands for state. Something that Jim Quick talks about is that learning is state-dependent. You learn more when you're excited or happy or inquisitive or fascinated or just emotionally satisfied with what you're doing. If I think back to high school, uh, and particularly English class, um, I had to read The Great Gatsby. And if I think back on it now, did I get anything from that? Heck no. But why is that? It's probably because I didn't want to read it. I was forced to do a book report and presentation on something that I didn't want to do. And I was also forced to look for symbolism throughout this boring ass book. No wonder I didn't get anything from it. But I can tell you I learned a ton from reading like my favorite author, Matthew Riley. His books are super fun with interesting characters, incredible predicaments. Uh, they always seem to get out of them, of course. And the lessons that I learned there can apply to the rest of my life. So information plus emotion equals long time learning. If you love what you're studying, if you know that it will benefit you, and if you get active with it, you're going to get so much more out of it. And the T in fast stands for teach. When I teach something, just like I'm teaching you Jim's fast method right now, this reinforces the concepts for myself. I'm basically learning it twice. The more I teach something, the more it becomes ingrained in my subconsciousness. What I want you to do is learn everything with the idea that you're going to be teaching it to others. So this is having a teacher's mindset, and it's been proven in studies to be more effective for retaining information. You will naturally try harder to learn if you're expecting to teach it to others. So start teaching what you learn. It can be as simple as posting your thoughts in a forum or the Smart Poker Study Facebook group, maybe posting a hand history review and talking about it in terms of what you're learning. You're not necessarily being a teacher this way, but you're sharing what you're learning with others. So that is Jim Quick's FAST method. Remember, that's forget what you already know. Be active in your learning. All learning is state dependent, so get excited, get happy, and finally, teach what you learn. 
Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player. That's how I choose to listen to them, uh, including both of my books, How to Study Poker Volumes 1 and 2. And if you're looking for poker content from others, I just started listening this past week to Tommy Angelo's book, Elements of Poker. It was a good book when I read it a couple years ago, and it's still a good book listening to it now. It's kind of reinforcing the ideas that I learned a while ago. So just visit audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy to get your free audiobook. And a few quick shout outs today. The first shout out goes to Marcos. He purchased the expert hand reading webinar from me um, directly from the website. And if you want to link to it yourself, just go to the uh, show notes page for today. And also we have three people who bought the Smart HUD in this past week. They were Cristiano Coranto, Cyprian Dragomir, and Ryan Jewell. And you know, as I was looking at these names, it just occurred to me if this was like a Bond movie, these are perfect names for Bond to interact with, you know. You can imagine like Cyprian Dragomir is the villain of the story. He's a Russian dude, um, big scary dude, owns a gigantic, I don't know what he wants to do. He wants to take over the world's walnut industry and, and be the only walnut supplier. And he's doing this through nefarious means, right? So so Bond has to fight off Dragomir and his walnut empire. And he goes to Russia. He enlists the help of Ryan Jewell, who's a, I guess he's a CIA, mm, not a, maybe, maybe not a CIA operative. Maybe he works out of like the embassy over there in Russia. He is Bond's in into Russia. So Ryan Jewell helps him out. And as Bond is going after Dragomir, the ultimate villain, um, Cristiano Quaranta, or we could just call him Quaranta, is Dragomir's henchman. So um, Bond has to get into Russia with Ryan Jewell's help to fight off Quaranta and the ultimate villain Dragomir in their world walnut, I guess, empire. Pretty cool story. I think I should write that one. If you'd like to get the smart HUD like these three awesome Bond characters, um, just please go to the show notes page to find out how. Alrighty, poker people, back to class. So here are three more mindset shifts that you can make for your study sessions. The first one is having a mindset of learning over earning. I find that when my focus is on learning over earning, I do a better job. This is one mindset that you can easily adopt. With a focus on learning over earning, your motivation behind studying and playing poker is a little bit stronger than just the motivation of making money. When you learn new techniques, you improve your skills, which will naturally lead to more profitability. The second mindset shift is I want you to plan your studies. Just way too many of us fail to plan at all. Without a plan, our studies are either half-assed or non-existent. Two things that do not bode well for a poker career. Planning your studies leads to systematic improvement of your game, as opposed to like hopscotching back and forth between various skills or techniques. When you hopscotch from C bets to three bets to donk bets to opening ranges, you are never going to attain mastery in any of these areas. I've talked plenty about study planning in the past and within my books, but let me give you a very simple three-part plan right here. Part one is choose one theme per week. Study and practice that one theme until you feel confident in your understanding and the skills before you move on to the next. Part two is consume and act. So every day you should learn from one piece of poker content, then put at least one thing into action. It doesn't matter if it's a podcast, video, article, webinar, whatever. Learn from it, then act on it. And part three is review your play sessions. So you played a session yesterday. Today, you should review that session. Just spend 20 to 30 minutes, maybe look at the biggest winning hands, the biggest losing hands, check out each hand dealt maybe, uh, and watch how the table action unfolds as the game progresses. You can analyze your opponents and assess whether or not your approach to the table was a profitable one. And you can also review hands that relate specifically to your week study theme. The final thing I want to discuss today is developing a study routine. Here's a simple four-part routine to help you get your butt in the study chair more often. Part one, have a set study time. You know, I used to study from 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Now I move that from 8.30 to 9.30 instead. You are more likely to study if you block off some time each day for it. Part two, ditch the distractions. We do it for our play sessions. Why not for study sessions as well? 
turn off your internet browser, turn off your email, put your phone on airplane mode, whatever you got to do. Part three to making a routine is have a plan and execute it. I won't drone on about this anymore. Just make a weekly and a daily study plan already and then follow it. And the final part of the routine, get that mind warmed up. Do you remember what the S stood for in fast? If you said state, you are right. You want to get your mind and body in a state that's conducive to study. I recommend some mind-body exercises for this. My favorite one is juggling. I do this before every study session, and I actually do it now before most of my play sessions as well. It's just a way to get my mind firing. Uh, you can also do something like circle your hand around your belly while you pat your head with the other hand. I'm basically doing something physical that simultaneously engages my mind. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Put one thing I discussed into action starting today. Is it going to be Jim Quick's fast method? Maybe you're facing some of those same study challenges that I faced, so you'll implement one of my solutions. Or are you going to focus on learning over earning, planning your studies, or maybe create a study routine so you get it done more often? Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. This episode isn't complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 166. Go there for screenshots and links to everything discussed today and to find out ways in which you can support the show. Thank you so much for listening today. And some great news, I created a brand new Alexa skill. And sorry if that woke her up for you. It's a simple skill that allows you to play the latest episode in your flash briefing. Just search for Smart Poker Study in the Amazon Alexa store. Enable the skill, move it to the top of your flash briefing, then give it a test. Afterwards, please leave a five-star review. I appreciate it. Alrighty, poker people. Next week in episode number 167, I'll give you another Q&A episode. Send me your questions, sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I wanna fly as hell, I want the walls to melt, cause I got